not a secret that learning Mandarin Chinese is really difficult and your success will highly depend on what methods you're going to use and whether you find it fun to learn the language. So I have been studying Chinese, Mandarin Chinese for two and a half years. While learning Chinese, I tried out about 80 to 100 different sources, textbooks, software, um, different online courses and these are the ones which I think are either very effective or a lot of fun. Before we start I'm going to teach you one word which you need to know if you study Chinese it's jia you, so first tone, second tone. Jia you means to put in oil and this means fight, don't give up, do it, keep on going. Let's start with the first uh, most important category, the dictionary. The first one is Pico or also Humping Life, it's pretty much the same function. It's an app on your phone, it's free, you can also use it offline. You can even paint a character onto your screen and it actually recognizes that character. The second one is Vital Translate, which is very similar to Google Translate, but as you know in China, Google is banned, so even if you have a VPN, it doesn't work very well. Biden Translate also makes a lot of sense if you use that in your home country because it has a very good speech recognition software. For example, if I talk into my phone, can you please show me the way to the subway station? It, it recognizes my speech and converts that to Chinese characters, which I then can, if I'm in China, I can show that to the person on the streets, or I can find out how to use a certain word in a sentence. The third app is Papag Papago, which is a super useful app if you have, for example, a contract in Mandarin Chinese, or you get an email in Chinese, or you have um, you have a textbook, a pretty, I mean, the text in your textbook is pretty long and you don't really understand the meaning of the whole sentence. You can take a photo or a screenshot, and then the app runs over the text and gives you the whole translation. This firstly enables you to know the meaning of single characters, but also to understand the whole meaning. This is extremely useful if you have to quickly understand a whole text. It can save you a lot of time. The next point is probably the most fun point and a little bit more interesting if you're a little bit, if you're intermediate or an advanced learner. I think watching Chinese series and Chinese films teaches you a lot about the culture itself, and also what type of phrases a native speaker would use. I didn't do this for a very long time. I regretted that I didn't start earlier with this. And my very favorite website is called Viki. It's a website which, uh, where you can, it's a lot of Chinese series on that website. So you can um, have two different types of subtitles, the Mandarin subtitles and a subtitle in the language that you would like to have. For example, English or French or Spanish. Um, and then if you click on, so I would watch this, that series and every time if I don't understand something, I click on stop. And then I go with the mouse on top of that character and it actually shows me the pronunciation and the meaning of the single character. Plus I have the other translation in English underneath of the entire sentence. So in that way, it's very easy to pick up new vocabulary so that I can highly recommend this one. On another website, which is similar to the YouTube, but it's a Chinese version of YouTube, is called Billy Billy. You can also find a lot of reality shows. It's pretty much like YouTube in Chinese. Then other apps or websites that you could look up films, but some of them I think you have to pay for, and some of them are for free, is QIY, Yuku, and Tencent Video. These are actually the three biggest providers of um, movies in China. Okay, the next one is to read books and some sort of more like a novel. So if you're a beginner, this is really difficult. Even within level of HSK 5, I find it still very difficult to read a normal Chinese book. I need to use my dictionary pretty much all the time. Each sentence there are words that I don't understand. So I highly recommend to use Chinese graded reader series or graded reader series. That means that you have books which are, for example, for beginners, which only have in total 300 characters and the next level would have 600 characters and the next level 800 or 900. Um, there are three companies that I think write pretty good books. It's Chinese Breeze, Mandarin Companion and Graded Chinese Reader. They very often use traditional Chinese stories that the Chinese, like pretty much every Chinese person knows and simplify that in a way a non-native speaker can understand it. 
if you have a vocabulary that you haven't or it doesn't suit that level, then they would have the English translation on the bottom of the page. If you become more advanced, I would recommend that you buy yourself a book which you probably have read before in your life, for example, Harry Potter, and um, that makes it much easier to be able to follow the story. Probably the most important part when learning a language is to study vocabulary. If you don't study vocabulary, you're not going to improve. And I think one of the most and also most boring ways how to learn vocabulary is to use flashcards or a space repetition software. And space repetition software is pretty much to learn flashcards but just in an electronic way. There's two apps I can recommend. On one hand, Plico. This is the app I told you before, this is the dictionary app. You can buy an additional uh, function for that for 20 euros and then you have the flashcards within that app. So if I would look up a word, for example, house, I can um, click on a little button and then it says or add this to my flashcard deck. I don't use this app, some of my friends use that. I really like Anki. Anki is free for Android phones, but not for Apple phones. I think it costs about 20 US dollars. The best part of Anki is that you can download already made decks, which means that you can download a deck that another person has created. So, and that's a lot of work if it's a really good deck. They often have simplified character, traditional characters, the English translation, the pinyin, and, and sometimes you can even listen to the pronunciation. One of my favorite decks is called Spoon Fed Chinese. Um, that is a deck where you have over 2,000 sentences and they start with the very basic sentences, for example, I like the color blue. And then the last sentence would be, um, the Italian government announced that they would change their immigration policy by next month. So you can, really, you can actually improve a lot by just practicing that deck. And every other sentence you would have one new word in the sentence. So that's really useful, plus you also have the pronunciation and you learn on how to use that word in an entire deck. If you go to Anki and download this deck, um, I recommend to scroll through the description because this guy made another deck, the same one, which is without any mistakes or errors on his website and I think it costs two US dollars to download it from that website. It's often said that Chinese doesn't have grammar. I disagree with that point. I think every also Chinese has a lot of grammar, which is very different to a lot of Western languages. They have a lot of those patterns that you should be able to use if you want to speak on an more elegantly. Um, there's a lot of really crappy grammar books. Often I got books while, while I was in Chinese class in China, for example. They would use Chinese characters to explain Chinese grammar on a beginner level. It's absolutely useless. So my very favorite website is Chinese Grammar Wiki. They have a lot of very clear explanations until the level of HSK 4, maybe 5. Then there's another app, it's called Ninja Chinese, which is an app on your phone which has really good um, explanations also on how to distinguish certain characters and how to use, for example, the three different D in a different way. Then my very favorite textbook, which has one of the best grammar explanations, which I haven't seen in a lot of other grammar books, is that book from the National Taiwan Normal University. They have extremely well explained um, grammar explanations and also exercises with it. Okay, which brings us to the next point. Which textbooks should you use? I think everybody should use a textbook at the beginning until you probably reach level HSK 3 or 4. Because without textbooks, you won't learn grammar, you won't learn good sentence patterns, and you will not have a good basis on what you can build on. As I just said, this one is one of the best textbooks. I used this in Taiwan at the National Taiwan Normal University, which was by far the best university or best Chinese courses I attended because we had every single day vocabulary tests and every week we would have a grammar test and um, that really made you study a lot. They have a lot of really interesting texts because I think a lot of other textbooks which I use are super, super boring or they have not very good explanations or they have super difficult texts or the text just doesn't interest me or it's super old fashioned. So this book has a lot of interesting texts. It has the text in traditional Chinese and then in simplified Chinese and then the grammar explanations are in 
English and traditional Chinese and the exercises are also in traditional Chinese. So if you don't want to study traditional Chinese, this is probably not the right book for you. And then I can recommend you to use the book Standard Course HSK, which looks like this. It's um, a book which you can also use by yourself to learn Chinese and I think it's also very often used by the Confucius Institute. They have also pretty good grammar explanations, nice exercises and the texts are also pretty okay. Since Mandarin is a tonal language, it's very important to get a lot of audio exposure and if you don't live in a Chinese speaking environment, then you can also create that artificially in at home. I either switch on the radio or the TV, but I find that personally super annoying. I can't listen to that more than a few minutes. So a lot of Chinese learners just switch it on in the morning while getting ready for the day so that they can listen to at least something. I like listening to podcasts because it's a little bit more fun to listen to compared to radio and TV. My very favorite podcast is called Chinese Pod. Usually you can listen to a dialogue in a very fast pace and after that they explain it very slowly, they explain new grammar patterns, new words and after that they have that dialogue again three times in a fast pace. And the cool thing is that you don't only have the podcast but you also have an interactive user phase where you can click on the characters and you can also see the grammar explanations again in written form. Look for the older dialogues because I think since 2008 new people took over that app and since that time it's not that entertaining anymore. But they have a huge library so you have a lot to listen to. Actually all the other sources I introduced to you are for free or are super cheap but this one costs 20 to 30 US dollars per month which is yeah it's not cheap but if you compare it to having a one-on-one -on -one lesson or going to a Chinese course abroad it's definitely worth in my opinion. I had it for about six months and I listened to all the podcasts. Another thing which I like to do to practice my listening skills but also to learn new vocabulary is to listen to vocabulary lists. Which basically means that they say for example chemistry and I say hua xue, hua xue, and then biology, sheng wu xue, sheng wu xue. So it's really boring but at least in that way you're listening to a lot of different vocabulary and if you repeat this every day for a week then you at the end of the week, you know that vocabulary list. I don't necessarily know the characters, but at least I'm getting an idea of how to pronounce it and I'm just learning some vocabulary which I can use just for speaking. I either use the vocabulary lists of my textbooks or I'm using a podcast which is called Chinese 101. If you're looking for a more inclusive app, then I can highly recommend the app Duolingo, which is an app that is ext extremely interesting for beginners because there you can practice listening, reading, writing all at the same time. And the app is so much fun that a lot of people or a lot of my friends use that app for at least half a year to a year because most other apps are so boring that the majority of people just stop using it after one month, they just lose motivation. Another course which is really good is the course of the Beijing University, which is provided via the platform Coursera. It's for free. Coursera is a massive open online platform where a lot of universities post their courses for free on lots of different subjects. For example, biology, nanophysics, and for example, Chinese. And that course is... Um, that it has different levels from HSK 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe even 5. And in that course, a teacher usually explains you new grammar points, new words, then you have a few short texts that you can listen to, and after that you have exercises. If you are not Japanese or Korean, then it makes a lot of sense to actually understand Chinese characters. And in order to do so, I have two favorite blogs. One is called Hacking Chinese, and the other one is called Sapore Di. China or something like that. Hacking Chinese is my favorite one. That's a Norwegian guy who is really good in Mandarin and he broke down, for example, he explains why 80% of characters have a phonetic component. So that means if I have a certain sign in a character or a radical, I can, and I see that character, I see that same structure in another character, I can actually guess how to pronounce the other character, which is really useful if you're reading a text, you probably don't know the meaning, but you know how to pronounce the character. That's very interesting. If you have been practicing Mandarin for some time, then you know that the characters which you were able to write a few months ago, you will have 
probably forgotten by now. I'm able to read a lot of characters, but I forgot how to write so many of them. I don't think that writing characters is that important, but you should be able to write the most important ones. I like to use the app Squitter. It's an app that shows you the stroke order and it's also a flashcard system, so you won't forget those important vocabularies. I usually only practice writing the vocabulary which I find in my textbook, all the other vocabularies which I have picked up from TV series or from uh, podcasts, I would just write them down. I know how to read the character, I know the P, I know how to pronounce it, but I'm not necessarily able to write them. But all the characters from the textbooks, which I consider to be very important, I practice writing them. In this video I introduce a lot of sources to you and you might feel a little bit lost which one of those sources you should use. If you're a beginner I can recommend using those three sources together. Number one, get yourself a textbook, the textbook standard course HSK. Number two, get a description for about six months for Chinese pot. And number three, the flashcard system Anki and within that flashcard system you should download a deck for HSK Chinese and the deck Spoon Fed Chinese. I think with these three sources you cover listening, reading and writing in a good way and it's also fun to learn and you get a, a nicely structured way how to approach learning Chinese. If you are an intermediate or advanced learner then you should use those four sources. Number one, the online course of the Beijing University provided by the website Coursera. Number two, the flashcard system Anki. Again, download here the deck for HSK and for spoon-fed Chinese. Number three, watching Chinese movies and series on the website Wiki. And number four, this is probably more nice to have, reading some of those books from the rated, graded reader series. If you find this video informative, please give it a thumbs up. It was a lot of work to make. Yeah, my final words, 加油学中文!